Hey team, welcome to another BBB timeout. And in today's timeout, we're gonna talk about the difference between a force play and a tag play in baseball. I'm Coach Hart, and in these timeouts, I teach you the rules of baseball and how to play the game. Let's dive into the force play and the tag play. The first thing we're going to talk about is a force play. There are two types of plays that get outs in baseball. One of them is a force play, but this only applies to ground balls. We'll talk about that in a second. This type of play is when the base runner is forced to run to the next bag because there's a runner on the base before them. For example, there is a runner on first base and the batter hits a ground ball. The first base runner must run to second base because there's a runner running behind them. So this example, there's a runner on first, there's a ground ball. That runner on first, they have to run to second because there cannot be two people on one base at a time. There can only be one person occupying a base at one time. We'll discuss special situations like fly balls in later slides. For a force play, the defender must put their foot on the base and just catch the ball before the runner gets to the base and the runner is out. So for any force play, the defender only has to put their foot on the base. They have to have contact with the base and they have to catch the ball and then the runner is out. Just like in this example where the arrow is pointing, all they have to have is contact with the base with really any part of their body. So if they're like laying down on the ground, they could technically put their hand on the base and catch the ball. That doesn't usually happen because we're usually standing. So any part of their foot has to be in contact with the bag and they have to catch it. And if they catch it, that is a force play, that is an out. The defender can stretch as far as possible, but they have to keep contact with the base. So they can stretch as far as they want to try and get closer to the ball coming to them. I've seen first baseman do a full split before on the dirt and catch the ball. So they can stretch as far as they want, but they have to keep contact with the bag in order for it to be an out. A tag play. The second type of play is a tag play that gets an out. This play happens whenever the base runner is running and is not forced. They are running on their own. For example, they're stealing a base or they're trying to run out a double on a hit. So let's say they hit it in the gap in the outfield and they round first. They are not forced. They are running on their own. There's nobody running behind them to force them to the next bag. So they are running on their own. This play, in order for the defense to get the runner out, it turns into a tag play. So a tag play happens whenever the runner is not forced to the next base and they are running on their own. For this play, the defender who has the ball must tag the runner before they get to the base. So that's the big difference. Instead of having contact with the bag and catching the ball, they have to tag the runner before the runner gets to the bag. It doesn't matter where on the body the tag is made. They can tag any part of the body. They can tag the finger, the head, the body, the foot, anywhere. As long as the defender tags the body of the runner in any spot, the runner will be out. The defender must tag the runner with the ball or the glove with the ball inside. Otherwise, they are safe. So let me explain. They can either tag the runner physically with the ball itself, or they can have the ball inside their glove and put their glove on the runner, just like in this example. The ball is in the catcher's mitt right here. He is going to tag the runner's foot before they get to the base. So therefore, the runner would be out because they were tagged out. That is a tag play. You cannot have the ball in the glove and tag the runner with your hand. That doesn't count. The runner would be safe. You have to have either the ball in the glove and put the glove on the runner, or you have to have the ball in your hand and tag the runner with the ball itself. Those are the only two ways that the tag play results in an out. Otherwise, the runner will be safe. A tag play can happen at any time in the game. If there is ever a situation where the runner is off the bag and the defender has the ball and they tag the runner, that runner is out. This can happen at any point in the game. There could be a runner on second base and the shortstop could have the ball and the runner doesn't know. If they take one step off of the base, if they lose contact with the base at any moment, that shortstop could tag them and they would be out. So anytime that the runner leaves the base for any reason, 
or loses contact with the base at all, and they get tagged with the ball or with the glove with the ball inside, that runner is out. Base running with fly ball, so this is a little different. Whenever you're on base and there's less than two outs and the batter hits a fly ball or a line drive, basically a ball that's not on the ground, you cannot advance to the next base until the ball is caught. So if there's a fly ball, if the ball is hit and it does not hit the ground, you cannot advance to the next base until the ball is caught. If there are two outs already, then you run on anything because if it's caught, that would be the third out anyways, right? So that's kind of a rule. If there is ever two outs and you're on the bases, you run immediately on the crack of the bat. We say on the crack of the bat because any play that happens, that will be the third out. So you want to take advantage of that and you want to run as far as you can around the bases because let's say that there's a fly ball and you're on second base and you're rounding third. If that ball is dropped or that person or that player does not catch the ball, you're scoring, right? But if he catches the ball, that's the third out anyways, right? So it's kind of a rule that whenever there's two outs and you're on base, you run on anything, fly balls or ground balls. Whenever the ball is hit, you run. But if there's less than two outs, you cannot advance to the next base until the ball is caught. If you run on a fly ball with less than two outs and the defense catches it, they can throw it to the base that you were at, like a force play, and you will be out. So let's say you're at first base and there's a fly ball, and the fly ball, there's less than two outs, and you run to second. That defense, when they catch the ball, they can throw it to first base like a force play, so they catch it with their foot on the bag, you will be out. This is only on a fly ball. This is different than a ground ball. So anytime that you're on base with less than two outs and there's a fly ball and you run to the next base, that defense can throw it to the base that you left, that you were at, and if they tag the base or if they get a force play, then you will be out. If you want to advance to the next base on a fly ball with less than two outs, let's say that there's a fly ball deep in the outfield and you're, and you're on third base and you want to go home, you have to do something what we call tag up. Tagging up is when your foot is in contact with the base until the defense catches it. Once the ball is caught, you can advance to the next base. So that's the rule, right? So if there's a fly ball and there's less than two outs, let's say there's a deep fly ball into the outfield and you're on third base, you have to go put your foot on third base, be in contact with third base until the defense catches the ball. Once the ball is caught, then you can run and advance to the next base. This goes for any base. Let's say you're on first base and you want to go to the next base on a fly ball with less than two outs. You have to wait until the defense catches it and you have to make contact with the bag. And once you make contact with the bag and the defense catches it, then you are free to advance to the next base. So that's called tagging up. Since you're not forced and you're advancing, that play now becomes a tag play for the defense in order to get you out. So let's go back to that example. If you're on third and there's a fly ball to the outfield, you go and you tag up, you put your foot on the base and you wait for the center fielder to catch the ball. As soon as the center fielder catches the ball and you leave to go home, that center fielder throws it to home plate. When it gets to home plate, that catcher has to tag you. That is now a tag play because you are not forced. You are running on your own, so that is now a tag play to get you out. If he tags you, you're out. If you slide in and he doesn't tag you, you're safe. So that gets a little confusing, especially among beginner players where they don't know with less than two outs and there's a fly ball, you have to tag up. You have to make contact with the bag until the defense catches the ball. Once they catch the ball, then you can advance. And in order for the defense to get you out when you advance, that is a tag play. They must tag you to get you out. Some special situations. There are some special situations that happen where the offense, the runner, or the batter can be called out. The first one is if the base runner gets hit by a batted ball that has not been touched by the defense and is in fair territory, you are out. So let's say you're on first base and the batter hits a ground ball. If you're running and that ball hits you for some reason or there's a line drive and you're running in the base path and that ball hits you and the defense has not touched it, then you are out as long as it's in fair territory. If you're in foul territory, then you're safe. But if you're in fair territory and that ball hits you off of the bat that hasn't been touched by the defense, you're out. If the base runner runs out of the baseline, so there is a baseline in between the two bases, that is a baseline. 
if you are running from first to second and the second baseman has the ball and he's waiting there for to tag you, you can't just run to the outfield and run around him. That's called out of the baseline. There's a certain area that the base runners have to stay in, and it's called the baseline. If you go out of the baseline, the umpire can call you out. If the batter or base runner get called for some type of interference with the catcher or the defense, you are out. So there's different types of interferences that could happen. So the batter could interfere with the catcher somehow on a play, or a base runner could interfere with a defender in the field, and if they get called for interference, the runner could be out. But it goes both ways. There can be interference on offense and interference on defense. And if the offense, the base runner, or the batter gets called for interference, they are out. There are additional more specific situations that we'll discuss in later timeouts, but these are the most basic ones that happen kind of often. These are the easiest ones to remember, and these are the ones that happen the most, but there are definitely more situations, more specific situations, where different base runners and batters can get called out, and we'll go over those in later timeouts. I want to thank you for taking a time out with Building Better Baseball. Remember, I'm Coach Hart. If you like what you saw, be sure to support the channel by subscribing. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so you don't miss a video to improve your game. And I'll see you in the next time out.